do you plan well-structured event sequences in a narrative response? In this lesson, you will learn how to plan an imagined narrative reading response by developing well-structured event sequences. Here's our prompt. Write a poem in response to Emily Dickinson's The Wind's Visit, where the narrator is the wind. Your poem should describe a second visit between the two characters from the wind's point of view. The poem should be brief, like Dickinson's. Your poem should pick up where the wind's visit left off, and your word choice and description should let the reader know how the wind feels or reacts to this visit. Your poem should describe the visit completely so that the reader has a sense of a conclusion by the poem's end. In the writing process, we have four steps, the first of which is to read closely and analyze. Second, generate and plan. Third would be to draft and revise. And the fourth and final step would be to edit and publish. We're here at the second phase in the generate and plan step. Again, our response is we're going to be writing a poem in response to the wind's visit where the narrator is now the wind. So here's the first half of our poem by Emily Dickinson, The Wind's Visit. And this poem is about a narrator being visited by uh, a character, the wind. And poetry, just like stories, has a unique structure, a little different from stories, but it uh, does have a structure. And it may or may not follow events um, in a uh, climbing it order like a uh, story does to a climax, much like a story map would have the events in chronological order leading up to the climax. But uh, poetry does have an internal structure which sequences the events so that the reader can make sense of the text as they read. So we're going to be looking at the structure of the poetry. We're going to have three steps to our lesson. And the first is to reread the text, noticing how the author reveals the action's order. Second, we're going to ask ourselves, how does the author structure the events for the reader? And we're going to note if there are any time order or uh, pattern clues within the text. And our third uh, step will be to ask, what words and events add to the event structure? And we're going to write these down and add those to our list, because we're going to need them when we go to make our writing prompt response. So our first step of rereading the text and noticing how Emily Dickinson reveals the action's order. So here we have the first part of the poem, and um, as I reread, I'm going to be asking, what do I notice about the action's order? So I've reread the first half of the poem, and I'm paying attention to how she, Emily Dickinson reveals the action's order. So you notice here I have highlighted uh, each time there's a new action between the narrator and the wind. And so I'm going to jot these down. I'm going to jot down some notes about these actions and uh, how they occurred. I noticed that there, first the wind knocks, and then the narrator invites him in, and next the wind enters, and then the wind moves about the room. So there's this very uh, linear or sequence kind of time chronological order to how the events play out. You know, first there's a knock, he comes in. Uh, once she invites him, and it, it kind of moves along in a linear sequence. Okay, I'm going to continue with our first step and look at the second half of the poem. And again, I'm going to be asking, what do I notice about the action's order? So here again, I'm highlighting where I see an event, and here's what I have. So I'm going to jot these down. So the wind continues to move around the room, and then finally he leaves. So that's the kind of sequence linear order to this poem. So one thing happens and then the next. So it's the same kind of order I saw in the first half of the poem. And finally the narrator's alone. Next I'm going to ask how does the author structure the events for the reader? And I'm going to note any time order or pattern clues. So I'm thinking are there any time order words or is there a pattern to the structure? So I'm looking for time order words. I've got then circled and I have this at once. So, so far, I just have then and at once. And I'm going to continue with the same strategy as I look at the second half of the poem and ask myself, are there any time order words or a pattern to the structure of the poem? We have just then and again for time order words on this half of the poem. So I'm going to note those down. So there's the use of the word then and again. Okay, third step. 
I'm going to ask what words and events add to the event structure. I'm going to write these down and add to your list. So when we read through, there I'm noticing now, what does Emily Dickinson do to help me figure out the order of things here? So I had the quote come in. I answered. So I'm noticing that's past tense. And then enter then. Again, that's past tense. To offer whom a chair, present tense. And then how many birds at once, present tense. So I have a kind of a beginning start of the poem has a past tense. And then through the middle here, it's present. Let's check out the rest of the poem and see if we can see if there's any structure to the events. So I see if he passed, that's present tense. He visited, that's past tense. Still flitting present tense, but that's also modifying how he visited, which is past tense. And then he tapped past tense. So I'm seeing that it starts off past tense, in the middle it's present tense, and at the end it's past tense. It was, was also past tense. Okay, so that seems to be continuing there, that um, past the use of the verb tense to help us structure the events. So in our writing process, in our four stages, we're still in our generating and planning because we're still putting together how we're going to structure our events so that our poem makes sense to the reader. When we write our response to uh, the wind's visit where we have the narrator is the wind now. So in this lesson, we reread the text, noticing how the author reveals the actions of order. Next, we asked, how does the author structure the events for the reader? And we noted the time, order, and pattern clues. Finally, we looked for words and events that add to the event structure. And then we wrote those down and added to our list. In this lesson, you have learned how to plan an imagined narrative reading response by developing well-structured event sequences.